In this video, I'm going to show you one day in my life as a postdoc researcher in economics during the lockdown. First, you're going to see a typical day where I filmed small parts of my daily routine. And then I will explain really what it's like and what I'm doing, what are the four key things uh, that I'm doing as a researcher, mainly reading a lot, collecting data, working in statistics, and uh, planning, organizing many different projects. And, and I go beyond just explaining and showing you the daily routine, but really explain you what's at the core, what's behind everything I'm doing at the end of the video after the short clips. But just to give you a bit of context, so broadly speaking, I'm doing empirical research, mostly in conflicts and mostly linking trade with conflict. It could be natural gas trade, it could be trade of weapons. Now I'm, I'm also working on more historical things with my team in Zurich. So I'm a postdoc researcher at the University of Zurich. And in that context, I also have a, a significant part of my job, which is to manage a small team of four research officers. So wonderful minds uh, who help us with research, who produce tons of very, very important piece of work that will allow us to, to build papers on. And also, aside from research, I'm doing clearly scientific communication through different small projects that I, I'm trying to, to launch. And also, I'm, I have a bit of teaching. Even during uh, this lockdown period, I, I had some teaching either uh, to uh, smaller classes, but mostly remotely on Zoom, which is clearly something let's say, not optimal compared to in-class teaching. But, well, that's already absolutely wonderful that we are able to do that. And mostly what's the consequence? It's physical distancing not necessarily social distancing, but physical distancing. Hopefully we have tons of very good tools that allows us to keep working and exchanging with my colleagues all day long on Slack, on Skype, uh, even on, on WhatsApp sometimes by email. And we can really keep communicating as a very instantaneously uh, all day long. And also for most of the members of the team, we are not based in the same place in the world. Like, some people are on other continents. And hence, even without the lockdown situation, we will have to use those tools to communicate and it will not change much. I think the biggest thing that happens and that's uh, the big drawback of, of this situation is actually the informal meeting, right? Because when you, you have to really get new ideas to really encourage your creativity and creative mind and, and this together to find new ideas and solutions, and this is a bit tricky when you cannot meet uh, informally because usually it will be where you, you get mostly those ideas. If you go for lunch, if you just walk, if you go for coffee, you're kind of thinking about something else or just share a thought that you didn't plan you, you were going to share or something you just read. And, and that's also how all those things are created. So, so, so far, that's really the big drawback. And hopefully we will get back uh, this possibility in the near future but also absolutely fantastic and very lucky to, to be here in lockdown. I'm in Switzerland with my family uh, and, and this is a big plus actually, seeing my daughter uh, grow up and having the opportunity to eat with them uh, every day, so with my daughter and my wife. So I think this is very, very good as well. And on the productivity side, I'm quite convinced that it's, it's helping me a lot, being also at home, so when I take a break, I have the... the very big chance to spend time with them. So that being said, let's jump and start with a day in the life of a postdoc researcher in economics.
So now I really would like to talk about the process of research and how to organize the, the work and what it's like to do research, what are the big tasks and, and things that you will do uh, for your day, over the week, over the, the month. The first thing that's absolutely key is organizing your work. Basically, I tend to work on many projects at the same time. Maybe at the moment I have between 10 and 20 projects that I have to have my mind on. It might be teaching projects, it might be projects that I'm just coaching people to work on. It might be my own project or project that I'm co-author. But in, together, it's, it's really a big uh, thing in, in the work. It's really you have to plan. You have to manage to advance on all those different sub-projects at the same time with different people in different places in the world. And this is very key and the tricky part. So, so here is how I managed to, to get this going. Basically, I have uh, on the whiteboard behind me, I have like a, a list of, of projects that I'm working on, uh, classified in different uh, subcategories, teaching, communication, uh, research project, for example. Then I have a Eisenhower matrix, which is basically this this four cells table with what's important and urgent top left, what's not important, not urgent, so basically something you'll get rid of, <laughs> and, and then the, the things in between. And this, what I put in this matrix, is the medium term objective I want to achieve a uh, few months or one month, but mostly as yes, about a semester, let's say. And then basically I can just quickly look at this matrix and then at the beginning of the week or mostly at the end on Sunday or Friday, I will, uh, I will create a weekly plan for the weeks to, to come where I will allocate to each day some, uh, some project or time on, on different parts of what I want to, to get going this week. For example, Tuesday this project or Tuesday morning, first part, second part, uh, evening and so on and so on plus uh, putting the meetings and so on, but, but mostly I, I just plan like this to allocate to be sure that I will advance on the projects that I want to see advancing this week. Then in the morning or in the end, uh, at the end of the day, I, I prepare a to-do list. So I have the medium term with the Eisenhower uh, matrix. Then I have the weekly plan that I prepare end of the week. And then I have the daily plan which is a to-do list basically uh, i define at the end of the day and usually revise during the day and mostly in the morning the things that i want to do today and the morning i check that and i will try to to get rid as many possible as uh, as those tasks so like this i really have those three different uh, components to organize my work and this is very useful also to to see milestones to see progress this is really something that phd candidates struggle with to see progress they have to finish their phd in maybe five years uh, and, and this is a lot of time but at the same time it's just difficult to organize in such a long time period work so so with those three components i'm really able to see to organize medium short very short term and to see also the progress so of course for the to-do list i have the things i want to do today and then you have all the emergencies uh, that appears during the day that you have to solve so many things that are unpredictable and uh, but but having the to-do is really helpful to see that how many things you have done during this day because maybe you, you will definitely not finish your paper in a day uh, not in a year so so it's very useful to see okay i've done all that today and then at the end of the of the week also putting milestone at the beginning i wanted to be done with this this and that at the end i'm done with this this and that and this i really have to finish next week and it's really helping to see that you're going forward so I didn't want to read tons on that, it's mostly practice, but I've read one book that helped me, which is called uh, Votre Temps et Infini in French. I, I'll put the, the link and, and reference uh, in the descriptions uh, and potentially if it exists in English as well. The second big part of scientific research is reading. You spend a lot of time on reading the literature news or other things, but mostly uh, what's going on in the literature, what are the new things, what your colleagues are producing, what are the new articles uh, published, just to, to stay up to date with what are the, the latest findings and ideas that are there, uh, out there. And you really try to get ideas from that also, what would be the, the next step, what, what 
you would like to do with that? Uh, does it help your own research to find this? Is, is it a paper that you, you would need to cite? Is it a good potentially co-author that you want to work with? Uh, and so on. So it's, it's really central and I spend hours every day just reading the literature. It also helps to, to learn how, how to write, which is a very important part of scientific research. So this is completely crazy because you'd never learn how to write uh, at university when you're doing something like economics. But in the end, when you want to publish a paper, the way you write is, is nearly as important as the content. It, it's really striking how important it is. It's really marketing in the end. You want to be uh, exciting, to show things in a way that people want to read you, that you're able to really sell your story. And it's, it's really impressive how important it is and how it's not taught at all during university years. So, so now I'm working on that and uh, reading this fantastic book. So if you're looking for something uh, to help you doing that, this book is very short reads, concise, and with the key elements you, you might need to, to learn how to read uh, scientific research. The third part is data collection. It's a really important part and takes a lot of time as well. Uh, basically, you, where you spend time looking for data on the web, in the literature, uh, finding source replication data, uh, trying to create your own data set by collecting, by scraping, by scanning, by, by creating lots of stuff. And, and this is a big part uh, of research. Of course, I, I'm doing empirical research, so in every paper I will have I will require data to test hypothesis and um, and then once you have the data you have usually to clean to organize to to create different indicators variables based on those data and, and really this represents an important part uh, of the the work so mostly I, I keep those two tasks i start the day with with reading mostly when i more open mind to new ideas and fresh mind to to really it, it works better just for me in the morning and then usually maybe something like more automatic because I really use this creative mind already in the morning. So I will do something like data work in the second part of the morning and then move on to the, the, the next part. So mostly once you have the data, you, you will do your statistics, you will do your math. So basically you go on a statistical software for me, it's mostly Stata or R or Python in, in some cases, but it's mostly in Stata that I will work uh, on statistics, produce descriptive statistics, do analysis, uh, put together what we call in our team a research narrative. So it's really a short document to show your progress you're doing in each project. Like this, you can exchange with your colleague and decide on the next step. And again, with this idea of milestone, this is perfect because you really see everything is well documented and you see how it's advancing through time.